And welcome, ladies and gentlemen, back to the monastery. I'll figure out I'll figure out a introduction for these discussing videos one of these days, but cut me some slack. We've only done like two of them. Today is not that day. <laughs> but at the very least, we can say that we we can say that we run a we run a better show than the Rings of Power. <laughs> I'm not saying much. Low bar. Low bar. I can't even limbo under that. But I am your one and only gaming monk, and with me is good is good brother Xanatrix. I don't see the reason to do the to do the full intro when we're when we're going to be doing that on Friday, anyways. I'm fine with kicking it off right now. We're all good. <laughs> oh, so this is something that I usually don't cover in the in in this manner because there are other people who do this kind of thing. Because Nintendo Direct came and went about a week or so ago. Um, we would have done this. So we would have done this sooner, but there were other reasons. Mm -hmm. But now, normally, when it comes to Nintendo Directs, I, much like with a lot of these kind of things, I never watch it live for two reasons. One, um, timing. I'm usually at work when it happens. And two, I don't. There's already a bunch of other people who watch it and do live reactions to it. That's not my style. That's never been my style. As as was made clear during the E3 Hangover shows, which I'm hoping to bring that back. Let's hope E3 has enough to hang over about this year. If not, if not E, if not E3, I can always I can always shift it over to TGS or something. Something where we get all the good games that nobody hears about. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I get, I get plenty, I get plenty of good games nobody hears about because everybody's focusing on, everybody's focusing on the squeaky wheel and and lamenting that, and lamenting that we're in the, we're in the verge of a new crash. And I'm like, do you think it's going to happen or do you want it to happen just so you can justify your cynicism? It's not going to happen. We're nowhere near an, a new crash, and I don't know why these people keep saying that, other than the fact that they are cynical to the extreme. They are performatively cynical. Yeah, I'm I'm cynical in many ways. Monk knows this. You guys have probably heard me being cynical on other episodes. But when it comes to the world of video games, hell to the fuck no! I mean, there are so many fucking video games out there that there's something for anyone who isn't deliberately trying to hate it all. I mean, you're you're. Let's let's you let's use the let's use the instance of the fact that. Battlefield is, Battlefield has been shitting Battlefield and COD have been shitting the bed. Well, ladies and gentlemen, there is an alternative right over here called Hell Let Loose. It's not going it's not going to be the most forgiving game, but it's not it's going to be saddled saddled right in there between between that and say Arma. Mm -hmm. It's not it's not a full-on mill sim, but you are going to die quick. Mm -hmm. And for those people who want to stick to what is, quote, mainstream, end quote, that is still a good multiplayer shooter, Halo Infinite is right over there, motherfuckers. And I will tell you now, it's actually pretty fucking good! I mean, yes, the, yes, the, ba the Battle Pass bullshit is st it still has its issues, but when it comes to the moment-to-moment -moment act actual bang-bang shooty, oh. It is still pretty damn good, and the grappling hook in that thing is what I wanted the meat hook to be when we first saw Doom Eternal. I still like the meat hook in, Do in Doom Eternal, but it's not all that I was promised. Well, you know, at least it wasn't Peter Molyneux levels of uh, of promising, though. No. It, it It is better about that than Molyneux. <laughs> and I can understand them going the route that they did because... I can imagine I can imagine that that sort of freeform grappling hook being an absolute nightmare to program. I also think it doesn't fit the particular gameplay loop of that game, which is all about the whole um, encounters are as much frenetic, fast-paced action as puzzle combat. Mm -hmm. So having the meat hook take you to specific 
you know, specifically something you're aiming at so that you can possibly get in a good melee or your flamethrower or whatever you need to get resources. Maybe you're going in for a glory kill because you really need that. Mm -hmm. um, it is actually a really interesting and innovative way of doing it. And it also pushes you around the arena into or out of action. Oh, if some if somebody's if somebody's dis I've seen some people disappointed with the, with the with um with the state with the state of say fire fire emblem. I'm not sure why you'd want to be disappointed about the state of that. And I'm like, Vestria Saga's right over here, and that was made by Saga. The yep, the guy who the guy who invented Fire Emblem. Yep. Oh. Uh, you want Fire Emblem? Go go play Fire Emblem. You want something by the creator of Fire Emblem? Vestria Saga. We also have uh, what was the one that was just recently announced on Steam for me the other day? Dark, Dark, Dark Deity? Deity. Yeah. Yeah. Which is re which has been has been on Steam for a while. It's it was recently announced that it's going to head over to the Switch. It is really damn good. Um, yeah. Super good stuff. Yeah. For. Th Obviously, for the for those for those who want old school shooters, where do I fucking start? <laughs> um, it would be easier to just say, look at this swath of the PC gaming scene, and if you really just want old school shooters and you don't want all the all the new stuff, go play any Doom wad. Any uh, Doom wad. I could just point them into the direction of New Blood's catalog and just say, there you go, have fun. I'll see. I'll that see you too. in about six months. That too, or if we really wanted to be assholes, we just send them the Plutonia experiments. Um. No, if I if I re if I really wanted to if I really wanted to be an asshole, I just have them play Hexen on the highest skill. <laughs> have luck finding the buttons and keys. I want to like Hexen, but there's way too many things it does that piss me off. And I can't I can't <laughs> say it's incompetence because it's Raven. Raven knew what the fuck they were doing. Indeed. But uh the be all be all that as it may, um the the Nintendo Direct last week, I did watch live because well it was during my lunch break actually, which is funny. Um <laughs> I got lunch late that day. Mm -hmm. Uh it I was fucking hyped by some of the lesser known shit that we saw. I w I was like posting it up here in the monastery on our Discord just like, "Yo, this got announced. Holy shit." Um and I think Monk actually took a, a look a couple times and was like, "Huh. Now we got to do a thing about that." <laughs> Cuz the big reason that I usually don't cover Nintendo directs is it's usually stuff that could be considered safe, you know, a lot, you know, something Mario related, some something maybe something maybe Zelda related, or just saying, yeah, hey, yeah, we're still working on this. Um, they didn't even say that this direct. They they did nothing with Zelda this direct. Yeah, <laughs> pissed off so many people. You know, when when there was the whole thing when everybody was wondering who was going to be the next Smash DLC character, which that got cringe fast. That... I am... The fact that the, that the cringe meme actually hit peak hype and we got Sora, just... I was like, Sakurai, you've trolled enough. Please stop. Well, I, why, do you th why do you think I find it so apropos that after, after that happened, he did stop. I mean, it was the final character. Mm -hmm. It's like... <laughs> Because how how do you how do you top a, how do you top ascending one of one of the longest running memes during that during that whole run? A longer running meme, Goku. If no, he no. had ever announced Goku, that would have been fucking hilarious. But uh, we all know Shueisha wouldn't do that. Shueisha, nor would Bamco. Shueisha wouldn't do that. Bamco would rather would rather do would rather do more quote unquote interesting things like trying to do. DBZ meets Dead by Daylight or something. <laughs> Not throwing any shade at survivors, are we? I don't hate the idea. I just find it weird. 
from from the gameplay I've seen, it's actually while jank still because it was in beta. It was a it, it looked like it was fun. Mm -hmm. I'm sure that I'm sure there's something there, and I and Lord Lord knows when it comes to doing the when it comes to doing the play play through the story thing. That's that's been that's been long since a horse that's shuffled off this mortal coil. Xenoverse, Xenoverse Two, Kakarot. Um. Oh wait, I I I need to stop listing, or we'll be here until next winter. <laughs> plus, plus, it's not it's not like um it's not like it's not like anybody's gonna trust Bamco's internals to do to do another fighting game after they after they got completely after they got completely outdone by Arxis. I mean. A lot of people bitch about the DB fighters for some reason. It's like this isn't the same as other Arxis games. No shit. Blaze Blue is not the same as Guilty Gear. Grand Blue versus isn't the same as as Blaze Blue. D Are you DNF Duel isn't going isn't going to be isn't going to be were they were they expecting every Arxis game to be like Guilty Gear or some shit? Probably. Yeah, this is this is if you want to know why I keep pissing on um on tr on the concept of tradition on the concept of fetishized tradition, shit like this is why. As somebody who's had to deal has had to deal with that in his own area of expertise for the last twenty plus years. Um, this is the same as the people who say that RPGs always need to be turn based. <laughs> now who's throwing shade? I can't imagine who's throwing shade there. There's a thousand and one things I could be referencing. <laughs> and there's no way you can trace it back to us. We, we are le we are legally um, distinct and we have culpable deniability. Mm -hmm. But when I looked over some of the things that some of the things that were in this Nintendo Direct, that was when I realized yeah, we gotta do we gotta do a discussion discussion video on this because there's because there's some stuff that I don't think anybody saw coming, and there's some stuff that I think some people are gonna are going to be sweep, are gonna be sweeping under the rug, and I will not permit this shit to be get to be swept under the rug. Yeah. Now, uh, I do have one small aside for one of the safe bets. Um, Kirby and the Forgotten Land looks fantastic, and that's all I will say. We kind of expected that, but this transfer to a full 3D exploration system is just fantastic. And From there... And Mario Strikers is exactly what I figured it'd be. Um, the worst thing that I said about it is that, hey, is that, hey now FIFA players will have, an, will have a way to get their soccer fix without having to deal with FIFA. And they'll still be able to win. Yeah, without it, without having to empty, without having to empty their walls, and the one in one billion chance that they get Lionel Messi. <laughs> True, but beyond all of that main safe stuff, we have quite a few gems in the rough. Some are slightly bigger names; most are not. And I can hear somebody in the distance. What about Splatoon Three? What about Splatoon Three? I mean. Remember that Nintendo already wasted the chance to call Splatoon literally Spla the number two and N. Uh, I'm just saying. <laughs> I'm not saying I don't. I'm not saying I don't like Splatoon. I'm, I'm saying it's not. Um, it's not drop everything high priority for me. It just is. Mm-hmm. And it looks like more of the same, just more refined as uh, uh, compared to before. It's it's how Splatoon has been. Progressing Splatoon one, Splatoon two, Splatoon three. It's just taking the concept, further refining, further further game modes. Which is nice and all, but it doesn't make for a whole lot of discussion fodder. <laughs> but with that said, let's get started with our first item of the of to, of tonight, and that is Fire Emblem Warriors Three Hopes, a Musou game for Fire Emblem, the second one. Um, Fire Emblem Warriors, the original, mm -hmm. what, much like Hyrule Warriors, the original, is uh, Team Omega Force trying to find their place with the game. Uh, solid gameplay because Team Omega Force knows what they're doing with a Musou game. And they've had Team Ninja helping them out. Mm -hmm. 
but just like with the original Hyrule Warriors, um, it didn't quite know what it wanted to be at the time, uh, just because they were working with an IP that is so far outside of, you know, Dynasty or or Samurai Warriors. Um, and it got further refined as DLCs came out, and then, of course, you know, with as we saw with uh, Hyrule Warriors Age of Calamity... They found their niche within Zelda, and they fucking punched every button they could that said, this is the type of game we are. And uh, it was nearly night and day between original release Hyrule Warriors and original release Age of Calamity. Mm -hmm. And now we're getting that with um, th with Three Hopes. And I know some, I know some, I know that some grogs take it, take issue with the with um with supp with supposedly Fire Emblem turning into waifu bait over the last few years, but let's be honest, the people who are who make that kind of complaint are either grogs who we tell to fuck off, or are, or are um reset era users who we laugh at. Uh, and then of course, um, there's the truly cultured response of, so what if it also became waifu simulator warriors? Mm -hmm. That's additional options. For more people to enjoy. Yeah. And I'm per personally, I I liked the. I always I always liked the fa the faction setup that you that you had with three houses, um, to the point that I um, there's a small part of me that if that that if I was if I was running a a campaign in that setting. I would kind I would kind of build I would kind of build it the, and have the school essentially as a base. Of, mm -hmm. you know the the way the the way your base in XCOM is important. Yeah, I can see that. Uh, they can they kind of they kind of do that, but I just I just probably take it a step further. And yeah, the the um the fact that they were bring that they started bringing in formations into Fire Emblem was a nice touch. Um, I am curious if some of those formation tactics are going to show up in Three Hopes. I can see I can see the possibility of them of them showing up, but we'll we'll see. And I'm also curious if um, much like much like with some of the other um, collaborations that Omega Force has done with Nintendo, if Team Ninja is going to be brought in as a helper studio. Um, if it is, you know, Team Ninja as a helper studio has always been fantastic for gameplay. Mm -hmm. Um, as much as we rag on Other M, and we have a lot to rag on Other M for, it, one of the things we don't generally rag on is the gameplay outside of the first-person mode, because it's very clear the first-person mode was shoved in as a uh, callback to Prime. Uh, but I think that Fire Emblem Warriors Three Hopes is going to be... Uh, m much like with Age of Calamity, they know how Fire Emblem works now. Mm -hmm. They understand what makes Fire Emblem Fire Emblem, and they're taking possibly the most... <sighs> I don't want to say this as just a popularity thing, um, because as Fire Emblem has progressed and been exposed to more people, of course more people are going to be playing it. But Three Hopes is one of the most... <sighs> acclaimed among players i'm ignoring you mean, critics you mean three houses yes yes three houses excuse me i i'm looking at the list so i'm reading what's on the list <laughs> um yes three houses is one of the most acclaimed from a from the player base mm -hmm. uh so if this were metacritic scores um in fact actually let me check that for a second just because we like metacritic a little bit well, we like Metacritic's user score. Their critic score can go fuck it can go fuck off. Well, and the thing is, the thing here is that for three houses, the critic score and the user score, the meta score and the user score, are near identical, eighty nine and eight point eight. So, three houses is a very loved game. People like this game, and it's not hard to understand why. Um, this does have a lot more focus on personality. Um, the tea times that you can have with the students and stuff mm -hmm. uh, it is something that was 
technically in past games but removed on the u.s side because oh it's waifu petting and that's not that's not something we like thank you treehouse 2016 my video rant about not paying nintendo of 2016 money still applies during the year 2016 mm -hmm. <laughs> but this was actually a good way to put that same one-on-one -on -one system that was in the previous games into this game in a context that the West wouldn't pearl clutch about. Mm -hmm. uh, so, with all of that, you now get to have that, those personalities you know, those characters and people that you're familiar with if you've played Three Houses, and you get to play each of them instead of watching them animate and shoot people or stab people or whichever character you're playing at the time. You now get to go and actually beat ass as these people. Which... Um, as everyone knows, the best type of game is the game where the power fantasy is in full effect. <laughs> oh, yes. Now, moving, uh, moving on to our, to our next subject matter, we have something that we've talked about, dur we've talked about during, uh, during the, hang during the hangover call that we, that we did after E3 when we, that was originally supposed to be a video, but then, um, technical problems happened. Yeah. That is Advance Wars 1 and 2 Reboot Camp actually getting a proper release date. It's going to be it's going to be heading it's going to be heading out um April 8th. Yeah. And um again, for people who are who are poo-pooing uh Fire Emblem and want alternatives, here's one for you. Mm -hmm. Another turn-based strategy. Uh and it's really good. Um it's not quite the same, but I I find um I find I find the key, the key thing that makes Advance Wars work is how accessible it is. Yeah, I mean Wargroove, um, which is sort of a spiritual successor slash spiritual sister, mm -hmm. uh, is very much inspired by Advance Wars, um. I thought Wargroove was going to just be the new path. I mean, it's an indie studio making something that they clearly love very much and and took inspiration from something they love very much. The fact that we have Advance Wars 1 and 2 Reboot Camp, a remake of these games, and now with voice acting and stuff, sure, but mm -hmm. like it's, it's just bringing these old games forward. These old niche almost cult classic games and i i know i know that um i know that i know that Ju that july will 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 um do will do his call out about how when you're jumping out when you're jumping on the on remakes and reboots you're part of the problem um the ish when it comes to that it's not it's not a it's not as black and white of an affair of an affair as as he'd like to think and i I like I like July, but it, but I'm not going to agree with him all the time. And when it comes to when it comes to giving, because Advance Wars is is something that once Fire Emblem started getting more and more attention, Advance Wars kind of got thrown by the wayside, even though they're both brain children of intelligent systems. Yeah, um, and I I attribute that to. Uh... Probably the fact that Fire Emblem's characters are are the people you're fighting with, whereas Advance Wars characters are your commanding officers. Those are the people who have the personality. The units have a fun, quirky personality in their animation styles. Like they, you, you can tell that these units are are fun and quirky depending on what faction you're playing. Mm -hmm. Each one's different, but that's not the same as having the deeper character personality that the COs have. They tr they tried to do a they tried to do deeper personalities when it came to Days of Ruin, and that didn't exactly take. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Although Days of Ruin had other things that were really good and also not so good. Oh, I, I don't get me wrong. I like Days of Ruin, but at the same time, it is a bit of a tonal whiplash. Yes. I mean, as by the name and the fact that Advance Wars has been, you know, pretty cheery looking as a war strategy game. Mm -hmm. 
and I know it. I know it was around that time where everybody was trying to do the gritty reboot thing, for better or worse. But just be just, just because you can doesn't mean you should. Mm-hmm. And that's why I I know I know some people I know some people were probably like why why didn't they try and reboot um all th all three games why why stick with the first two um if they if they bundled in Days of Ruin that would probably create controversy. Not just controversy, it might actually drag the game down. Um, people might go, oh, one and two are great, and then they'll think of their memories of Days of Ruin if they haven't, and be like, but do I really want that one too? Mm -hmm. You'd be surprised. Most people will, you know, most people on their head will think, but that's three games for the same price instead of two games for the same price, and you don't have to play the third game. Sure, that sounds like a bargain, but... Think about it from the other side of things. That's an entire third of this product that you've purchased that you're never going to use. So did you really want to pay for that third? Mm -hmm. So uh, I think not including Days of Ruin was a good idea. And that if they do later include Days of Ruin, it'll probably be like a DLC update. Mm -hmm. Like, hey, pay five bucks to get the Days of Ruin DLC. I don't know if they will. Um, I almost think that they probably won't, but you never know. It could happen. <clears throat> oh yeah. Now, next up. Now, next up on our on our list is something that is in is in the same is in the same ball is in the same ballpark of being a of being a tactics tactics game, but it's certainly something I didn't I didn't think I'd see coming. Front mission I, first. I uh, I freaked the fuck out. I remember, uh, yeah, looking looking earlier, I the very first thing I posted about the the uh the direct was when front mission first popped up. I was like, front mission one remake for Switch, bro. <laughs> I was just like, I that was super exciting to me. Mm -hmm. Front mission has always been a niche like it is not a widespread game even at, with you know bangers like front mission 3 um and in recent years let's not front talk mission, about left alive or front mission evolved monk we have to be fair and explain why this is exciting because of previous failure all right let's get let's get into it Evol evolved was he, was or was around that was around the was in the seventh generation and tried to tried to go a more action route, being handled by Double Helix. Left Alive was a case of WTF because it was barely even a mech game, even though it did and didn't take place in the Front Mission universe. And when you look at the staff that was involved with the game, you're like, how did this end up failing? Yeah. Front Front Mission Evolved is a case of underwhelming. Left Alive is a case of what the fuck were you thinking? Mm -hmm. And so for those of us who have been, you know, Front Mission fans since the SNES days of Front Mission 1, we thought that Squeenix was going to shelve it. They're just going to put it up on the shelf and maybe come back to it later when they felt like it. Um, which is kind of true, except Left Alive was only released in 2019 and was really bad and still is really bad. What 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 are Left Alive's play uh play stats on Steam right now? Fuck and all. Exactly. <laughs> Like three hundred people. Left last time I looked, was so Left Alive was so bad, ladies and gentlemen, that even the hackers didn't want it. Yeah, there's no hackers on there. Nobody gives a shit. No, I'm saying I'm saying when it, I'm saying when it came to the game, get some games get cracked within days. The pirates waited like two and a half years before they'd even touch it. Yeah, <laughs> that crack only recently came out. Mm -hmm. But and then of course you know for online games where there is a multiplayer element you'd expect there to have its fair share of hackers and no 
They don't want to play the game. They don't like it. Okay, let me play um, a little game of buy or let me get, play a little game of buy or sell with you, Sam. Oh God. Oh God. Um, <laughs> Left Alive and Metal Gear Survive. You gotta buy one. You gotta sell one. I fucking hate you. <laughs> this, is, <laughs> this is. I know how buy or sell works, Monk. This one's actually hard. Um, I will buy Left Alive and sell Survive, if only because Survive's exceptionally predatory microtransaction schemes. Like, they are way more predatory than anything anybody's ever come up with. Except you gotta buy your save slots. I think the only, I think the only other, I think the only one that'd probably be more predatory is World of Warcraft. Oh, those aren't, those aren't microtransactions, Monk. Those are features. <laughs> Fuck. But. Off. <laughs> but uh, in this case, seeing that front mission, the the, the first, it's called front mission first for a reason. Um, the very first game from SNES that was just this... Do you want to know where I found that game, Monk? Shoot. A little website called fantasyanime.com. Oh, now that's a deep fucking cut. They're still up. I'm subbed to their fucking YouTube, and I talk to them in their comments every so often. Um... But they they were one of the few emulation websites I went to back in... Um, I'm not going to say the year. That's going to date myself. Um, like but you let's just say, already? Let's just say that Zophar's domain was still up, running, and alive, and <laughs> ZSNES was still the, pro, the prominent uh, SNES emulator at the time. Mm -hmm. this, is, this, is where, this is the game where I got some of the other things we'll be talking about later. Mm -hmm. And uh, just... Everything like this. This place was, yeah. They have Front Mission and Front Mission Gun Hazard. Mm -hmm. uh, they have, and then of course over on Genesis side of things, things like Fantasy Star and Shining Force. Yeah, they have a game that I still haven't seen. I with some of the other stuff on this on this list. I'm hoping we will see a Treasure of the Rudras remake. Mm -hmm. That's a deep cut. Yeah. <laughs> um. But Fantasy Anime was where I first got Front Mission One, and. I was just, the game is, you want tactics, guys. You want mech tactics? You want front mission. You want this game where you move along the grid with your mecha? Your mechas are f customizable. Uh, legs, arms, torso, head, weapons on the shoulders and the, and the hands. You're like, well, so what? That's normal for mech games. Not in 19, what was it, 1992? Something mm -hmm. like that. Uh, it, that that was that was not no 1995. Yeah, excuse 19, me. 95. What the hell? Were, yeah. What the hell are we thinking? I don't know. It, it just I always associate the SNES with 92. Don't ask me why. <laughs> but uh, this this was a game where you had all that. But then. On top of that, oh, you just move into range, choose your weapon, shoot your guy. No, you move into range, choose your weapon, choose where you want to hit. Hmm. And then shoot your guy, or punch your guy, or missile your guy, or artillery your guy. Let's, um, not, let's not forget... I know, I know, I know some, I know some of you mech warriors might be saying, might be looking at that and, and going not impressed. Um... Keep in keep in keep in mind that for for the for tactics RPGs on consoles, this kind of thing was unheard of. Especially the whole the whole thing of di of different mech parts or vonzer parts, if I want to be pedantic, having, the their, vonzers, own health, yes. having their own health pools. Mm -hmm. Each arm, leg, head, torso, all of it has its own health pool, mm -hmm. which means your mech can go down an arm. It loses the weapon on that arm and shoulder. But you are still in the fight. Or your mech can lose a leg or two. It slows down, like, to two space movement. But you're still in the fight. You can even lose your head. Because then you lose, like, targeting accuracy and such. You are still in the fight. 
It is only when the torso goes to zero that your Vonzer dies. Mm-hmm. And they they tease the they tease the fact that they're that they're doing a remake of of both one and two. And yeah, I was excited about that one when I saw it too. <laughs> the right now the the. Now putting putting aside that some of the people in the in the comments for the article that I look that I looked it up on um were complaining about the were complaining about the gameplay um which I just write off as as um sno- as snobbishness um for 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 me that for me I'm gl- I'm glad to I'm glad to see it back I'm glad to see some variety when it comes to Mac Esp- and what I fi- what I find kind of amusing is for the longest time, I've been hyping up a spiritual successor to Front Mission called Zeka Tactics, <laughs> and then this and then this drops. So now we have two Front Missions. Gee, Bob, why does your mom let you have two Front Missions? Three in this case. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, but this is this this is hype for so many reasons. First, this is Square Enix going, maybe Left Alive wasn't the best direction to take Front Mission. Maybe there are people who still like Front Mission. Let's find out. And, again, other than some of the naysayers naysayers I see in articles and comments, and it's a pretty small amount uh, compared to the massive amount of hype people are having. Like... Yo, it was it was my reaction times a million. I'ma say, although when I was actually watching live, there were so many pu- people putting L in the chat, and I, uh, as a snide asshole, I put for everyone calling front mission an L, uh, you might want to hold that for yourself. Let's people be- got angry at me. But let's be honest: the people who the people who were sa- were saying that it should be an L are the same people who. What, who want who want who um all, who only all they wanted was just was just two names <laughs> the um the they were some of the fan dumbs yeah and if i'm if i'm being honest from from the gameplay reveals that i've seen of the of the project it now gra- granted it look granted it looks a little bit primitive for for now but it looks about it looks about what I'd expect it to look. And incidentally, can I point can I point out how hypocritical it is that pe- that the same people who say that gra- say that graphics don't make the game and lament about the st- about um about the em- the overemphasis on graphics go, r- mm. go in the same br- in the same breath um will t- will will c- will talk about a game looking like l- looking like a last gen project. Mm-hmm. That's uh, that's something that I al- I always find I always find annoying. It's a case is a case of um talking out of both sides of your neck. Yeah. Um, I'd also like to point out when it comes to uh, Zeka Tactics, as you pointed out earlier, the people you've been hyping up for a while. Mm-hmm. On February tenth, the day after the direct, um, they retweet Krieg's Front Tactics talking about uh, Front Mission One and Two getting a remake on Nintendo Switch. Mm-hmm. Zeka, Zeka Tactics is just fine with that. Their 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 statement: a resurgence of Mecha Tactics games is on the way. They're not wrong. You want to know what makes this even better for us? Mm. We get we get to throw more shade at Gigak. <laughs> I got to <laughs> as an aside. I got to throw shade at Gigak and at. Some members over at Across Wiki mm-hmm. <laughs> earlier today. Um, what was it? It was uh, someone said, uh, "Sentai is dead. Don't let the fanboys say otherwise." They were quoting someone, and they used a, a J. Jonah, J. Jonah Jameson uh, emote to indicate that. Mm-hmm. And I was like, uh, "Man, why does this sound so much like Gigic saying Mecca is dead?" <laughs> Oh, I love the guys over at Across, even if some of them are grognards. 
you know, some some of them are grogs, but hey, it just hey, it just means we get just means that they're they're a very effective sharpening block. True, very true. But uh, this entire resurgence of uh, of mecha tactics, I am um, I, two thumbs up and hands around whichever controller I need. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, and of course, and. The thing, and of course, there, of course, I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure there's a there's a few other um, a few a few other a few other Mac projects in this in the same category that we've oh, that we've omitted. But one thing at a time. And hey, maybe if this does well enough, we'll get we'll get to see um we'll get to see Gun Hazard get another chance. I'd like after how well Hardcore Mecha turned out, I'd like to see that happen. Especially I'd love to see Gun Hazard. Yeah. I want to make explicitly clear. Some people say that the reason Front Mission Evolved was a disappointment was because it was an action game. This is not the case. Gun Hazard is an action is an action mecha. And 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 it is fucking great. Hardcore Mecha is an action mecha. And it's fucking great. Yep. You just have to do it right. Mm-hmm. And now we move on to another thing that the Across Grogs bitch about. SD Gundam Battle Alliance. <laughs> let me get. Let me guess. It's. Let me guess. They bitch. They bitched about it because because SD. No, the actually over and across. There's. They're really. Um, they're really accepting of the SD Gundam side of Gundam, and you know that's to their credit. I will give them that credit. SD Gundam is hard for some people to get into just because they think Chibi Gundams look stupid or something. The only the only SD Gundam I make fun of still is the TV show just because it was so ham. But I mean that was the point. <laughs> um, so me making fun of something being ham is kind of par for the course. Also, the idea of all of the all of the mechs from Wing being being knights just makes me laugh. <laughs> I forgot about that part. <laughs> but no, uh, there were there were. You know the, the 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 normal negative Nancy crowd over there. I, I constantly tell them at this point, you must be so much fun at parties. <laughs> um, just just that small set of people were like, oh, SD Gundam again. Oh, Battle Alliance looks so bad. Oh, Cross Rays was bad. I'm like, boy, were we playing the same game? Cross Rays was great. Why do I get the feeling that the, that the last Gundam game that they played was Battle Assault 2. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe it's the last Gundam game they played that they liked. I like I said, I will I will give even the Across Grogs their due. They do play the games. They just have shit taste. Mm -hmm. And I can say that over here. <laughs> but if I'm being if I'm being honest, what I see what I see out of it is exactly what I would ex what I would expect a bit of arc a bit of arcadey fun. Yeah, um, and I'm hoping what I kind of want to see is someone taking the idea of SD Gundam Breaker or of Gundam Breaker, which was a good idea executed a little poorly, um, and turn it onto an SD Gundam because I think. The idea in SD Gundam would probably shine, especially since with the super deformed, if you're mixing and matching arms, legs, heads of, of Gundams and other MSs, um, it's going to look super hilarious, and you're just going to have more fun that way. Mm -hmm. But this looks fantastic. I, I I am definitely looking forward to playing this. Yeah. Oh. And I'm sure I'm... The... I rem... One of my one of my fondest one of my fondest PS2 memories when it comes to Gundam has all was always Federation versus Zeon, and a lot of a lot of those arcadey style um, affairs. Mm -hmm. Even even if um, even if certain even if certain mechs were ridiculously OP in Federation versus Zeon. Hi, Gun Tank. How the fuck are you doing? And I still hate you for your your sniping fucking ass. Um, let's let's be real. The Gun Tank is kind of an OP unit that everybody overlooks but that's a different story yeah i it's just you ever have you ever have to deal with that one guy who just ha who just hangs back and and camps mm -hmm. <laughs> i have 
Yeah. Counterpicking gun tank is hard. Mm -hmm. I don't even think I ever successfully counterpicked it. I just got lucky. Really, the only way to counter counterpick gun tank is with another gun tank. Which I which I didn't use. I just I just did the whole policy of of um he of he can't he of um if I keep if he doesn't know how I think the sole reason I managed to win the last time is because he didn't know how to lead his shots. If he can't hit you, you win. Yeah. That you gotta and, do the serpentine, serpentine. <laughs> that and um that and I just and. I um I put I j I did the one strategy that some sport some football teams should do but they don't run the clock out. One of the ways I beat a gun tank was to well get in Char's Zaku two, mm -hmm. which is funnily enough isn't that much faster than a normal Zaku two in Federation versus Young, even though it's supposed to be three times faster. Thank you. Separation of gameplay and 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 narrative, Pluto narrative dissonance. But uh, when you're playing a char, for some reason people freak out. And when you're doing this thing where you're going side to side, up down side to side, and, and just changing directions every like half second, they're like, "Oh my god, it's a red comet!" And then you kill them because they're panicking. <laughs> but the psychological warfare. Well, if the en if the enemy has a weakness, you exploit it. Mm -hmm. But I'm not saying that SD Gundam Battle Alliance is going to be high priority. But if I happen to if I happen to grab it, I can see I can see myself um ha having a bit of dumb fun. Yeah, it's a popcorn game. Mm -hmm. You throw it on, play a few missions, throw it off again. Mm -hmm. But next is the one thing that you that was the first time you tagged me directly regarding th regarding everything that happened. <laughs> so the next game when I when when I saw it I was like So Chrono Cross the Radical Dreamers edition it's like they're pandering directly to you monk <laughs> Fuck you You're not <laughs> You're not wrong but fuck you <laughs> So this is exactly what it sounds like Chrono Cross ported and includes the Radical Dreamers Satellivision kinetic visual novel thing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, it is completing a story that we never got. The fan translation was a thing. That quickly got a C and D. Mm -hmm. Sad days. But... If you've played Chrono Cross or seen Chrono Cross, you know what you're in for with Chrono Cross. And what Radical Dreamers does is it tries to tie together the universes of Trigger and Cross in a way that makes sense. Mm. It's supposed to explain how we got to Cross from Trigger. Now, the thing Monk and I have always been worried about when it comes to Chrono Cross is when those Trigger's better than Cross guys come out of the woodwork pretty pretty much i didn't see them no be, no because that no because the, if i because the because um they because they because they're too, they're too busy huffing their own huffing their own farts and i yeah, we we've got so we've got some people in the temple who who have their love who have their love for trigger, but there is there when it comes to when it comes to cross. There, I ha I have I have a special relationship with cross because the combination of cross and eight were the, were the chain of events that inspired me to to rethink how I approach game mechanics. And why I started to put more and more of a focus on interesting game mechanics, it's which is—it's it's also the reason why I think when it comes to the Final Fantasy crew, the one guy who doesn't get enough credit is Hiroyuki Ito. Ah, uh, Ito, my favorite writer. Well, I, I bring it up not for not for his writing per se, but for a lot, but for the fact that a lot of the a lot of the battle systems that are hallmarks these days are thanks to him. 
including uh -huh. active time. That was uh -huh. his idea. Yep. For those of you unfamiliar with Hiroyuki Ito, if you want to know what he's responsible for writing-wise, 6, 9, 12. Mm -hmm. That should be all you need to know writing-wise. Yeah. And of course, as we pointed out already with interesting features. He's responsible for a large portion of the... He's responsible for the a large portion of the job system in 5. He was responsible for active time battle in in four mm -hmm. he's he's responsible for oh for a lot of the advancement systems um for yeah, from um i say from five onward yep. he, he had a hand either directly or indirectly so espers materia junk junctioning whatever 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 that ap system was in nine um, <laughs> the, the sphere grid um I don't know. I don't recall if he was involved with if it, if he was involved with dress spheres and garment grid, and the and the license board. Those are all, those are all his babies. Mm -hmm. There might be a few others that that I'm that I'm thinking of. And his hand his hand is is direct or indirect in that in that regard. Um. And five five I'd say f I'd say five is the mo is the moment where the job system as we understand it was. More or less codified, like even yeah, even it, when we were doing our own work with FF Legend, we had we had um when going through the jobs in three, there were a lot of jobs that were just they they're just there to add space. Yeah, whereas the jobs in five all feel unique and useful mm -hmm. depending on how you use them. Though there are you know the busted the busted exploitative setups, including once you finally get everybody to mimics. Yeah. But I can't. I can't really hold. The, I can't really hold one game again. I can't really hold that against it one inst. That one instance, because it's, it's gonna happen no matter what you do. It's gonna happen, and every every game has every game in the whole series has that has that expl has that one exploit moment. Magic evade bug in FF six. What are you talking about? Maybe we could go with that. <laughs> we could go with um psycho cyan. <laughs> we could go with um. Infinite Ungar Max in seven. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> with eight, pick one. <laughs> Disc one nuke, getting Kiraga on your life and now having infinite life. Mm -hmm. Disc one nuke, getting Ultima on any stat! Oh, junction system. As counterintuitive as it is to just hold on to all of your magical charges to use the stat boosters... You were fucking great. Yeah. Um I I I'd say there I didn't exploit them as much, but there were certainly some glitches in 9. Um and of co of course t of course 10, well the celestial weapons can get ab can get patently ridiculous. Yep. And all of all of this is to say that uh th this is some of the battle craziness that comes from Ito. Mm -hmm. So how does this all play into Cross? Let me tell you about uh, let me tell you about attacks and the element grid. <laughs> i.e. one i.e. one of the rare cases of someone putting in a Vancian model that didn't piss me off. A Vancian model that actually wasn't bad. Everything, so mu everything revolves around elements, items, spells, techniques. It's all it it is all it is all around elements. However, this isn't a case of a certain number of charges before you have to do a long rest, unlike say Suikoden, or or or, or early or early um, FF one and three in particular. No, you get no you you build up you build up levels in your element grid through attacks and instead of doing a basic attack you have a light medium and heavy that gives that gives you a percentage heavy attacks are going to do more damage going to give you more stacks quickly but they have the lowest rate 
because for for each one you get one, two, or three levels for your for your setup. And there's the fact that every time a spell is cast, it adds a field effect. Yep. Um, Chrono Cross's combat quickly became extremely complicated in certain ways. I'd say comp. I'd say comp. I'd say complicated, but not convoluted. Yeah, it wasn't so complicated that you just got lost. It was one of those systems with a low bar of entry and a high ceiling. So anybody who's listened to us talk about other games that have a low bar to entry and a high ceiling know how much we love that because it gives you a wide playground to play in. You can experiment, you can test, you can find optimal cool little things that only you would find because it's something that's that you're thinking of in your brain. Um, um, I'd also like to point out that summoning was isn't wasn't a win button. You actually you actually had to you actually had to pl you actually had to plan for it accordingly. <laughs> oh man, the summon system in Chrono Cross. <sighs> and you d instead instead of instead of XP you just l you just leveled up stats directly granted you granted um there was a formula to to what to what would get leveled up based on the character but that's that's a that's a bit of heavy math I don't feel like going into just look at the FF wiki when it comes to when it, in in a lot of the abilities for 9 and the math that's involved with determining the numbers <laughs> yeah um but because of the depth to the system, mm -hmm. they did have to make it. They they did have to make uh, concessions in character building elsewhere, because there were there were always going to be people who never wanted to explore the depths of that system and just kind of wanted to have an easier time of it. Mm -hmm. And the game can be played that way, though you'll never kill any of the super bosses that way. <laughs> no. <laughs> <sighs> and. I think so, something else. Something else that I, I will I will freely admit that one of the reasons why one of the reasons that Chrono Cross and to to a to a similar but different degree Final Fantasy X are are games that I are games that I look on fondly is the is the way they present themselves in in so far as um the setting that the setting that they kind of go with. Both yeah. of them are both of them are very much island culture. F um, ten, I believe the designers outright admitted that one of the big points of inspiration was the Philippines, mm -hmm. and I could certainly see that or Okinawa in in Chrono Cross's DNA. With Chrono Cross's DNA, I see, I see a lot of Okinawa. But I also see a lot of what people collectively call Pacific Islander. Things that, you know, some people would say Maori or so Samoan, things of that nature. Yeah. Um, they're very brightly colored in Chrono Cross. Man, are those colors bright. They're so good. And um, part of the... Part of, there's also... the. the I never, I never found it. But if there, if there was an art book for Chrono Cross, I would, I would have gotten it. It probably and, exists. It's also probably prohibitively expensive. Yeah, and I, I still have the, I still have the old strategy guide that that I got way back in the day. Um, but the there is one, there is one quote, for, there is one quote that was in a GameSpot review. Yes, I know that I think, I think some, I think summarizes, um the the experience when it comes to a game like Chrono Cross it may not ha the wording was it may not have the biggest budget but it has the biggest heart and it ended up getting a perfect mhm mm which which is what is why when i when i see when i see people talk up a storm about how about how it's how it's absolute trash because it couldn't live up to chrono trigger I think that is extremely unfair because I, first off, the Enix end of the, of of that Chrono Trigger project wasn't around. 
Okay. Yeah. And I don't think it, I don't think it was interested in being Chrono Trigger, but more, but rather being its own identity. Yes, it was definitely its own identity. And I think I think for I think for that reason it ha it has it has its own it has it, it if it was if it was just more Chrono Trigger, it would have done worse. Yeah, it has allusions to Chrono Trigger. There's there there are because that DNA is there. Mm -hmm. But uh, Chrono Cross is definitely its own identity. Um, and something uh, these are some quotes that I, I'd actually like to pull up. Yes, this is Wikipedia, but they got the primary uh, the primary sources. Mm -hmm. Um. First, Masato Kato, he's the scenario director for uh, Chrono Trigger. We didn't want to directly extend Chrono Trigger into a sequel, but create a new Chrono with links to the original. Yes, the platform changed. And yes, there are many parts that changed dramatically from the previous work. But in my view, the whole point in making Chrono Cross was to make a new Chrono with the best available skills and technologies of today. I never had any intentions of just taking the system from Trigger and moving it onto the PlayStation console. That's why I believe Cross is Cross and not Trigger 2. And then... Incid incidentally, the ba the battle system from Trigger was a nightmare to program, which is why they never did it again. But uh, Until um, Tokyo Art House did I Am Setsuna, and it was basically... Chrono Cross, Chrono Trigger's whole battle system over again. Well, by that um, point, you had te you had tech that would make it easier to do. Yeah, I think that also some similar Chrono Trigger stuff in um in Lost Sphere as well, but that's mm -hmm. different. And then, of course, uh, the producer appointed by Square's managers, Hiromichi Tanaka, uh, said, "When creating a series, one method is to carry over a basic system, improving upon it as the series progresses." But our stance has been to create a completely new and different world from the ground up, and to restructure the former style. Therefore, Chrono Cross is not a sequel to Chrono Trigger. Had it been, it would have been called Chrono Trigger 2. Our main objective for Chrono Cross was to share a little bit of the Chrono Trigger worldview, while creating a completely different game as a means of providing new entertainment to the player. This is mainly due to the transition in platform generation from SNES to the PlayStation, the method I mentioned above about improving upon a basic system has inefficiencies in that it's impossible to maximize the console's performance as the console continues to make improvements in leaps and bounds. Although essentially an RPG, at its core, it is a computer game, and I believe that games should be expressed with a close connection to the console's performance. Therefore, in regards to game development, our goal has always been to express the game utilizing the maximum performance of the console at that time. I strongly believe that anything created in this way will continue to be innovative. Mm -hmm. And this mindset of innovation <clears throat> is something that we do see uh, not just across, say, Square. Square did lots of innovative things. Sometimes they hit their slumps. Every business does. But this is something that we see pretty consistently across... Um, Eastern developers in general. And uh, I do want. I do want to. I do want to get on one. Other, one other thing. Okay. This is something that I've heard with D and D Fourth Edition, and it's something that I've heard with with um Chrono with Chrono Cross. And it's whenever I hear this for whatever re, for whatever reason, maybe maybe you can help me figure this out. Every time I hear this particular argument, it always leaves a very bad taste in my mouth. And that that is if um if Chron if, if Chrono Cross or if if Chrono Cross did not have the Chrono in the name, if it had a different name, it would have been better off. Or in fourth edition's case, it would have been better off if it hadn't been called D and D. For whatever reason, that argument always leaves a sour taste in my mouth. So. That argument, specifically referring to things like D and D Fourth and Chrono Cross, leaves a sour sour note for many reasons, um, and I can understand why. Now that argument has its merits other places, 
I've I've made that argument with things like, uh, for example, Iron-Blooded Orphans. Um, it doesn't feel like Gundam. It doesn't look like Gundam. It should have been its own thing. It would have gotten a lot more acclaim. But with something like Chrono Cross, uh, the DNA was already a part of that game's development. They were looking at making another Chrono series game. That was the goal. So saying not having the Chrono name, maybe it would have done better. Maybe it wouldn't have. It probably would have done worse, especially at the time that it was uh, produced, because nobody it would have been a sure it's a square game, but it kind of looks meh, is what most people probably would have said. This doesn't really it doesn't really appeal. There's also um, the fact that it came out the same year as FF8. Yes, it would have been overshadowed greatly by FF8. I mean, it was technically already overshadowed by FF8, um, but. Attaching Chrono to the name gives people who played the games or are, who are aware of the games that understanding, that connection, saying, this is going to feel like Chrono? Is it going to feel like Trigger? Is this going to feel like Trigger? And parts of it do. Parts of it have the same evocation of the themes that Trigger had. A little darker. In some cases, a lot darker. Um... And a little more matured, but still that sense of wonder by switching between worlds and so and so on uh, to influence everything that's going on. The same thing about you know going through time and opening up the later chests and then going back and opening up the earlier chests to get both sets of armor and stuff. That all those little things that came together that were nice attention to detail. We're carried over into Cross. Cross had a bunch of attention to detail that was really good. Mm -hmm. And it made the game feel alive. And it made and it made sense to invoke and evoke the chrono name for it because of that. Mm -hmm. Um and then of course with D D fourth, um not putting D D on it, nobody would have given it the time of day. Especially, like it would, especially not the D and D crowd who only play that, only play one game and nothing else. Yep. But for me, for me personally, whenever whenever I hear the whenever I hear that argument, um, putting us putting aside so, putting aside something like uh, putting aside obvious cases like IBO or or um Dante. Mm -hmm. Um. The. I think what I th what it really ends up betraying to me is an infl is an inflexibility um, among the person arguing it because as I mentioned as I mentioned to as I mentioned on the on the ep on episode two of the of the adventures of the monk and the monarch as well as in the recent mu in the recent culture has culture has no license um, musing that I put up earlier mm -hmm. this week there. I'm not so much in, I'm not so much interested in the argument per se as much as I am in the person making it and what and why they'd come to that why they'd come to that um conclusion mm -hmm. and more often than not I find that it I find that it betrays a reliance on tra on tradition for its own sake or in some, mm -hmm. or in some or in some cases an over an over an over reliance on the uh, an over attachment mm -hmm. To something that came before, because another example that I could use with this kind of thing is in the ta in the tales in the tales of universe. I got annoyed really quickly how so many people were comparing every tale that came after Symphonia to Symphonia, and I've, ta I I've can... talked about this with good, with Good Brother Daniel. Yeah, no, I, I I we and we've had smaller discussions about it too. Um, there are defining works within series we know that they, they happen sweet rifles to reference a book by to reference a short story by gary paulson yep uh, uh the for those of you who don't know the story of the sweet rifle go read it we've talked about it before in other in other uh, stories and and paraphrased it before but yes sweet rifles um they, they these these 
series defining games are always going to draw some attention and comparison mm -hmm. but relying on that comparison is what we have the issue with yes um it, it's just like we have an issue with the people in the final fantasy sphere constantly comparing everything to final fantasy 7 so, 7 was no oh, go ahead i think i think for i think a lot of cases the reason why they do it is because it is because it was their first and that's what that's why I, that's why i bring up the whole thing of attachment yeah it, it also doesn't like with 7 it it was the change from 2d from 2d to 3d um it was the change from snes to playstation um it was the change from nintendo to sony it was the it was a lot of different paradigm shifts all at once uh and it was also a really good story and a really good game i i am the first to admit i have played through final fantasy 6 over 200 times and final fantasy 7 over 150 mm -hmm. i've played through these games because i love them to death but i will always call out the people who throw the overhype on any of them I'll joke about overhyping six, but in seriousness, it's my favorite. It doesn't have to be yours. Mm -hmm. uh, these games are, you know, Trigger, Seven, Tales of Symphonia, all these games that are these paradigm shifts. They are the, the things that bring this almost hatred of fan base to, to my life these days. <laughs> It is. It's one of. It's one of the many reasons we have the fans, not fandom, philosophy here. Exactly. But for me, per, getting back onto getting back onto the subject matter, um, getting back onto the rails. Um, for me, I never, I never got a chance to read through any anything more than just pieces of the of the radical of the radical dreamers story. Mm hmm. The translation got, like I said, got C and D pretty early on. Mm -hmm. Like I remember seeing screenshots here and there, and that's as best as we got. So for me, I think it's inevitable that I'll end up grabbing Chrono Cross, even though I still have my PS One copy, if only be, if only to give myself some closure. Mm hmm. Understandable, and that's part of why they're doing it. Mm -hmm. You already have Cross, but do you have Radical Dreamers in official translation? Yeah, because there's there's a lot there's obviously obviously a lot of stuff that happened in, happened in between um and i don't i don't want i don't want to have another bit of of um of of time of time whiplash like i did all those years ago with lunar <laughs> which is mm -hmm. another which is another one of those well when when we did when we did the when we did that whole episode on ps1 rpgs let's not let's not forget that with that with so with so many of them, I had I had said, <laughs> I had, I said I can't I can't choose three from this list. Which is why we went through the whole list. Yeah. <laughs> well, I can't just choose three. I I looked at that list and I told you fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> how do you think I felt? I know how you felt. That's why I said it. Yeah. But moving right along, then we get some. Then we get a little something that is very much very much a case of I. Of a pleasant surprise, Klonoa Very Fantasy pleasant. Reverie series, basically a remake of the first two Klonoas, the best two, the only two. Mm -hmm. Klonoa is one of those two D slash three D platformers that was really common around the time of the end of the SNES, the beginning of the PlayStation, the sixty four, all those ones that you know. Pla one one of the many platformers among platformer heaven, mm -hmm. um, the the golden age of, of platform reconstruction, and Klonoa was good. It's super good. It's got nice characters and really fun, tight controls. Um, and seeing it as, as Fantasy Reverie as as basically just a remake of one and two to go play them again. Yes, I'm here for that. Oh, yeah. I'm absolutely here for that. Yeah, one and two. One and two are um, 
the first now the first one what what I'm seeing out of this is ju is just do is just doing a clean is just doing a a cleaned up a cleaned up version of both the bit the bigger jump the jump from the original Lunatees Veil vale and the PS2 to what we're seeing here isn't as much of a jump as what we're seeing with Door to Phantom Isle and what we're seeing here. Mm-hmm. Because Lunatees Veil vale already already looked pretty damn good. Yes. Yes. Everything's been cleaned up to to a much higher standard. Mm -hmm. And it, it's you're basically gonna get Klonoa with probably even tighter controls. And an updated coat of paint. Yeah. And sometimes that's all you need. But this is this is also the point where I was watching and I was just like, holy shit, a Klonoa revival? And this is exactly where a monk goes, we might have to do a deeper dive later on. Yeah, because after after the Wii version came came and went and went and was and was a complete dud, I had figured I wouldn't see any Klonoa, but um I never got to finish the first game. I have finished two, but I never got to finish the first because it was fucking hard to find. It still is fucking hard to find. And now it won't be. Mm -hmm. And and I hear that screeching in the background, in the in the in the distance. Collectors. It should still be hard to find because I still have my original copy. Here's what I have to say to collectors. You still have your original copy of the original game on its original system. Yeah, that's still going to have rarity. But fuck you if you think that limiting access is a good thing. Mm -hmm. And the other th the uh, from the thing is is that I is that rarity and the like I could give less than a shit about. I've never been I've never been one of those people who will, who will buy something just to have just to have it just to have it um just to have it display like i've yeah. i've never been i've never been of that vibe of if i'm <laughs> if i'm buying if i am buying say suikoden n 2 i'm not get, i'm not doing i'm not going to put it up in in a unwrapped thing or or some shit like that i'm buying it because i want because i want to play suikoden n 2 or like me if if i buy a limited edition Real grade unicorn perfectibility gunpla. Not that I've already done that or anything. Um, <laughs> I'm I'm not just gonna put it on its action base and put it up on a shelf and leave it alone. I'm gonna play with that shit like an action figure. Fuck y'all. <laughs> but if you play with it, the joints will get loose. So the joints get loose. I'm still having fun. Besides, joints can be replaced. True. Then again, there are then again there are those people who are willing to pay seventy five dollars for one for one miniature. You know, uh, for milk bobs. <laughs> Man, I hope we popularize that somehow. Gams is already popularizing it, but I hope it popularizes with our crowd too. Yeah. <laughs> so next on the next on the list is something that we've talked about a handful of times, but it's good but it's good to see that it's getting closer and closer to our release date. Let's talk about Triangle Strategy. The game that was just called Project Triangle Strategy dropped Project. I guess the official name is just Triangle Strategy. Some of the people here in the monastery were kind of confused about that. <laughs> I had figured Triangle Strategy for the longest time was going to be a placeholder name. Because that's usually how it goes anytime we see Project in a name. Yeah, I mean, Project Athia eventually became Forspoken. Mm -hmm. Which I am getting because that game looks fucking sick yeah but project triangle strategy mm -hmm. is well have any of you ever played a little little known game called final fantasy tactics because <laughs> this is a, this is a spiritual successor to that yeah, sort there's of been, there's been no shortage of um there's been no shortage of games in the in that in that particular area um one one that I one that I've one that I've talked about that that was actually a fair bit of fun even if it kicked my ass early on is Fel Seal Arbiter's Mark. Yep. Yep. But uh, Triangle Strategy's big um, defining outside of battle feature is the triangle of 
what do we kind of what do we call them? <sighs> philosophies? Yes. I mean, I, I I guess it's a it's three different philosophies you can follow that actually affect the types of units you can, types of story units you can recruit, and the way that the actual uh, story goes. Which means, first of all, unlike some of the other entries in tactics like games, this is going to have a ton of replayability. You want to know um, what I'm, you want to know what I was reminded of when I when I was looking into triangle strategy. What's that? I had jokingly said it's like it's like if um it's it's like if Final Fantasy Tactics and the Saga series had a baby. <laughs> well, I mean, the Saga series could use more love too, but that's a different story. Mm -hmm. I'm crying on the inside for that one. I mean, we did get a so, technically a re-release of Saga one, and, or was it Saga two recently? Romancing, I think all three Romancing Sagas have gotten some form of re-release. Yeah. But Triangle Strategy also has, in combat, a lot more battlefield control than the previous tactics games. Mm. You can shove enemies around and stuff. Yeah. Which is always nice. I love seeing that in a tactical game. Mm -hmm. And there's been plenty of um, bully builds I've, do I've done in tabletop games revolving around abusing Bull Rush. <laughs> and then, of course, you know, going back to 4th edition, um, moving... Moving enemies around the combat map was kind of part and parcel for play. At least from what I've understood talking to you about it. It, it was. Yeah. To the, to the point where it's a big deal that dwarves can't get moved around as much. <laughs> I'm a fucking dwarf! You ain't moving me from this fucking square! <laughs> there, there you go. And Requisite Scottish for the yeah. day. They'll still get moved, they'll just get moved less. <laughs> But um, Triangle Strategy still has some of the hallmarks that we saw all the way back in the original Tactics, such as if you are higher up, your bows have more range. Which, I always loved that. Yeah. And, of, co of course, of course, other, other things like... C there, are there, are certain little, there are certain little things that you, ne that you, never, um, you never realize how much you take, how much you take for granted... Chief among them being a a actual turn order. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Also, what something I find kind of funny is the release date is March fourth. What was March third? No, it's March fourth. You're right. You know, ev everything releases on Tuesday. True. Um. Oh man! But yeah, of course, of course, I'm, of course, I'm gonna end up, of course, I'm gonna end up grabbing it. Um, uh, I hope you're playing. I hope you're playing the new demo, by the way. I I probably will. I probably will be dipping into that this weekend when I ha when I have some when I have some time when I'm not working my ass off on things. Yeah, this demo actually has carryover at uh, compared to the previous demo. So. And so. I think the the coolest thing about triangle strategy is going to be that that three philosophy system, mm -hmm. because there's there are so many ways that that three way balance could go, and how that affects the the countries you're fighting and and who you who you get and who you don't. That's that's a big one. And then, so the, just, just a small aside, um, choosing values related to one of the three philosophies does affect gameplay as well. Mm -hmm. Such as some scenarios may get more difficult depending on which, which thing you pick during a story scene. And those three values are related to morality, liberty, and utility. If I had to, um, if I had to boil them down to real-world philosophies, you're looking at uh, consequentialism, libertarianism, and utilitarianism. Mm -hmm. <laughs> for those of you who don't know what those are, I suggest you go look them up. Even a small dip into philosophy is really helpful for some of these things. 
And the, the, the big thing I love about triangle strategy that I don't think anybody pays attention to because they're looking at triangle strategy and thinking Final Fantasy Tactics to maybe not look underneath the hood. Development is led by Tomoya Asano, the producer for Bravely Default and Octopath Traveler. Mm -hmm. This and game is in good hands. Yeah. <laughs> now, the next one that's on the next one that's on the list is one that we don't have a whole lot of info for, but given who it's making mad, is or is our it's already get, it's already going to have a bit of a win in my book. <laughs> let's, talk about, let's talk about Xenoblade Chronicles 3. <laughs> so many people so fucking furious. Uh, it was even getting hatred over on a cross wiki. Well, let, well, let's be honest. If a cross wiki hates it, that I think we sh I think we should have a bit of a rule that those people on a cross wiki, if they hate it, then it's probably going to be good. <laughs> well, they they hate all of. Uh, the people that you've heard me rant about before, they hate all of the Xenoblade series because they're expecting Xenogears or Xenosaga. I'm like, but Xenogears doesn't even connect to Xenosaga other than by the same Zohar imagery that's been in all of the Xeno games, including Blade. The Zohar is, is fucking Pyrus Core Crystal, for Christ's sake. Uh... <laughs> What we know about Xenoblade Chronicles 3, however, mm -hmm. is, it, and this was said in the direct, Xenoblade Chronicles 3 explores the future of the two worlds already explored in Chronicles 1 and 2. This is the future of these two worlds. Full stop. Mm -hmm. And... The only th the only thing that I the only thing that I'd ask is, in due time, I would at the very least like to see a port of X onto the Switch so more people can try that out. A lot of people are asking for that. I do think it's only uh, a matter of time before it ha before it happens. Especially since they're uh, shutting down the uh, Wii U and Nintendo 3DS eShops soon, um, because the Wii U where X is the only place playable, has on the Wii U eShop a, a um, performance upgrade patch that will be inaccessible once those close down. Mm -hmm. And they've, talk they've talked about the central theme being life, which can, me which can, mean, quite a f which can mean quite a few things. It's very clear that it's still that we're still in a fairly early stage in its development. Oh yeah. But ju but the fan artists are going are going to have a field day with it as they as they always do. And the and um Reset Air is going to be butt mad. Hell, they already are butt mad. And it, is it people are already comparing the uh the cat girl character to being this game's Nia. Oh. Um, and person personally, the thing the thing that made me la the thing that made me laugh a bit is seeing someone you using um we need on we need an onmyonji, but we can't call him an onmyonji in this setting. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna laugh if they're called onmyoji in the Japanese voice track. Um, it would certainly it would certainly fit because that's ex because that's immediately what I think of when I see that when I see those birds that are. For all intents and purposes, um, Shiki. Yeah, they're Shiki Gami. That's definitely true. Mm -hmm. And I know but it wouldn't make sense. For, it it wouldn't make sense in setting for them to have that name, but oh, <laughs> just let me let me have my fun. Of course, that's what the game is for—to have fun. Mm -hmm. And. What I, what I, I've, I've seen some, I've seen some people remark that the, that the character designs look generic, which, uh, which, um, honest, honestly, I don't see. I mean, generic is a relative term. Maybe they look generic compared to some of the designs of characters in the previous two games, but not really. 
No. Not really. <laughs> I'm, I'm not seeing it either. So yeah, I'm. Some people were saying that they were trying that they're that they're planning on desexualizing characters, which, um, I think the only people arguing arguing that are people who are are people who are looking for witches. Yep. Seek thou witches, and thou shalt find. Mm -hmm. For me, per for me personally, I want I want to see some more footage before I before I um before I say anything. I especially if this was if this was say Treehouse, we probably would we probably would have seen some um ga some bit some gameplay by game now. Yeah, which we're probably gonna see in a few months. Yeah, especially since this game releases September this year. They props to, props to them for keeping this hush hush for that long. Keeping it hush hush and developing it in the background with everything else. Mm -hmm. Jesus, Monolith, we love you. Thank you, Monolith Soft, I should say. Excuse yeah. me. Um, well, I I liked Monolith. Then Shadow of War happened. <laughs> I even forgave them for Shogo. As bad as as bad as Shogo was, their heart was in the right place. This is why I. This is why you got the slow laughter, monk. <laughs> Well, when it comes to Blood Two, yes, Blood Two is bad, but they kind of but blame GT Interactive trying trying to trying to get one last bit of buck before they get before they get bought out. Yep. But then we then we get to the thing the thing that it that um. <laughs> <laughs> okay, who saw this coming? Raise your hand. Now put your hand mm -hmm. down, you filthy fucking liar. You filthy fucking liars. No. You may think that this list is too square centric because we've got Front Mission, we've got Chrono Cross, we've got Triangle Strategy, but fuck you, we have an official remaster with an official translation in HD2D of Live Alive. This is where I literally shouted in my own house, in my chair, what the fuck? Nobody <laughs> saw this coming. I was flabbergasted, and my soul was at full mass. Because <laughs> I, think, I think we need to give a bit of background, because Live Alive has been one of those best-kept secrets when it comes to fans' translations. Okay... Okay, so guys, Live Alive. Much like Front Mission, the first place I encountered this, FantasyAnime.com. I downloaded it. It looked cool. It was by Square. I was a Square fanboy as a little kid. And can you blame me? Final Fantasy IV, Final Fantasy VI, 2 and 3 on the SNES, Chrono Trigger, a whole bunch of other good Square games. I was bought. I was caught. Hook, line, and sinker. So I was like, Square game I've never heard of. Never came to US. Patch! Translation patch! Let's do it! This game is a story anthology. If you've played the Saga Frontier games, you might be a little familiar with the types of story anthologies Square's capable of. This game is like the precursor to all that. You've got, at first, seven main characters you can choose from. Each one is a different point in history. Starting all the way at Ooga Booga Caveman against Dinosaurs prehistory, going all the way far forward to We Are Traveling the Stars and This is an Aliens Horror Story sci-fi. And I'm I'm not even joking. It's basically alien, except you play a robot. So your bishop. A so alien, except you play Ash or Bishop. <laughs> <laughs> but th these games, their translations were actually their their labors of love. You could tell that people were very invested in these translations, and it's actually. A really hard translation project because each as 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 I'm aware, each period in the game 
used different period of <laughs> period appropriate dialects of Japanese. <laughs> so prehistory doesn't have words; they speak in pic- literal in literal pictures. They get little speech bubbles with pictures. Mm-hmm. Um, the kind of the kind of thing you might you might have seen in a in a yeah, in a Chuck in a Chuck Jones cartoon. Yeah, but as you go forward, you hit something like Imperial China. That's some pretty old Japanese. That's that's Yamato level era Japanese. Um, then you go forward to Wild West, which is going to be, you know. Uh, Meiji era Japanese, maybe even a little earlier. You get to the modern day. That's probably the easiest Japanese for the entire team to translate because it's modern. And as you go ahead, you, you know, you hit near future. The there was also a level I've skipped over because the ninja got away. <laughs> oh man, but the. The best thing about these particular uh, stories was each of them could be solved in various fashions. They had tons of activities within them you could do. Um, I mean, the story I skipped over, the Imperial Japan story, um, where you play the ninja Oboromaru, and... There are multiple ways to take on the task of eliminating the guy you're supposed to eliminate as a ninja. Mm-hmm. You can kill everyone. You can kill no one. You can even run away from the mission, which has its own ending that doesn't count. You have to play the story over again. Mm-hmm. But the best part about this is once you completed all seven of them, you got the fantasy story, which explains why all of the the bosses are connected somehow. Now, I'm not going to get too much into that, because that's just... Play the game if you want to know. But uh, after completing the eighth story, you then get to take the characters from the previous seven stories into the final dungeon to go face down the BBEG. And you go through various dungeons... That are themed around them and their stories. Mm-hmm. Which is... I, If you can't tell, I fucking love this game! I love this game! This game is on par with Final Fantasy VI for me, y'all. And if you know me well enough, that's high praise. Mm-hmm. This game is getting what I consider to be a... Loving passion treatment. HD 2D for this? Yes, fucking please. It also sounds like it's getting voice work from what I saw in the trailer. So that's fantastic. But what's most exciting for me, this is an official Western release of a game that never got a Western release. It's it's phenomenal. And who knows? I don't know if you could, could trap lightning in a bottle twice, like, with Live Alive. But who knows? If there's enough interest in this, maybe there's some sort of Live Alive series around the corner. That's me and my hyper-optimistic thinking at work, which is rare for me. But again, Live Alive, I fucking love! <laughs> my My... Entreaties to all of you listening. Play this game. If you like RPGs with interesting battle mechanics, if you like RPGs with fantastic stories, if you like playing through multiple stories that eventually tie together, play this game. And ignore anybody who says that this is anything like Dark Hero Party. Yeah, I remember what I remember when you brought that up that people were making that comparison and at the time I didn't know about Dark Hero Party. Now that I know about Dark Hero Party, I'm still going what the fuck. <laughs> For anybody who doesn't know what Dark Hero Party is, don't look it up. Just trust me, this game is nothing like it. The most they could do is compare it to only one of the eight total stories and even then the comparison is shit. Mm-hmm. So 
Don't look up Dark Hero Party. Trust me that Live Alive is fantastic. And if you aren't convinced, we don't... We don't endorse criminal activity, but I'm sure you have a tricorn with a Jolly Roger on it. I'm, I'm sure you know some places that uh, may or may not have already been mentioned in this episode that could help you out. Sail them high seas. Go try it out for yourself. Mm -hmm. My screed is done, Monk. I've yeah. done my job as a vigilant here. Yeah. The um, I've I've seen the worst that I've seen some I've seen some people pull the cynic route and say that they're gonna make this ep gonna make this epic exclusive. Um, well, if they do. You know, you know what to, we're not gonna we're not going to endorse we're not going to endorse what needs to be done, but you know what to do. Tricorns, Jolly Rogers, you go. I don't care how you I don't care how you play this thing, just that you do. That's all. That's always been my philosophy. That's the reason why we can't get into that whole sealed collectible kind of thing because the th because what mat what matters to the reason why, when it comes to the when it comes to these lesser no, when it comes to lesser known projects getting remade, why we why we have a higher seal of approval for them, is the fact that we ha we our mindset is we want more people to play more games and to play games that that they may have that they may not even know they may have liked from pa from past or present. I'll put it this way. Any of these games on this list that we've that we discussed, and even some of the ones we kind of mentioned in passing, mm -hmm. you may not like one of them. You may not even like many of them. But any of the games that we've mentioned across Geek Watch, across any other discussion we've had, anything you've seen on this channel, there's something in there for you. Something. I guarantee fucking tea it. It is just like when we did our discussion on VTubers. The fact that there is a wide reach, a large, eclectic collection of things that people know nearly nothing about. They're niche. They're cult classic. They're something small and hidden. We bring those diamonds out of the rough into the light. Choose one. Pick it up. Play it. Read it. Watch it. Whatever, mm -hmm. do it. I don't care if you love Live Alive as much as me. I'm. Uh, you already know I'm fucking flipping out over here over this. Mm -hmm. And even if it goes Epic Store exclusive, have a fucking Nintendo Switch. I'm gonna go buy it over there. I want to support this. <laughs> yeah. And. <sighs> When I, whenever, it, there I will know I will I do I do think I'd be remiss if I didn't mention a couple a couple of minor things. There's that Disney racing thing that honestly I have no interest in because, um, let's be honest. If anybody's <laughs> gonna be doing kart racing on the Switch, they're doing Mario Kart. Uh huh. There's no the only way the only real way to get around it is to do something different, which is the reason why Crash Team Racing has the reputation it does because mm -hmm. it's its idea is. Oh, Mario Mario Kart is accessible. Where we're we're, get, we're gonna make it. We're gonna make the kart racing equivalent of fuck you. <laughs> oh, well, fuck you and fuck you in a good way. I like yep. Crash Team Racing. It does not like me back. <laughs> and on the on the other on on the other on the other end of the spectrum, you could you could have some you could have something arcadey like what Split Second was. Where it's mm -hmm. just Michael Bay, the racing game, <laughs> in the be in the best possible way. And then, of course, you've got all the other racing games out there that are high octane. Yeah, and um, Taiko, Taiko no Ta Taiko no Tatsujin was also was also brought up, which um, the sole reason I didn't I didn't make that a focus tonight is because 
There's not a whole lot to really say. It's it, Tycho. It's it's Tycho on the Switch. The very least, we're not dealing with any gimmicks. But it's exactly what I would think, what you would think it would be. It, there's not a whole lot to really say when it comes to when it comes to rhythm games, unless unless it's a unless the rhythm part is is in, is in something larger, like in say No Straight Roads. Or if the rhythm part is an arcade machine, like mm -hmm. Pop and Play. Yeah. Or um, or if you or if it's or if it's part of some whack cracktastic adventure like Guitaru Man back in the day. Uh, Guitaru Man or Um Jammer Lammy or mm -hmm. Harappa the Rappa. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but again, and I know th I know there was also the announcement of the uh, of the update when it comes to No Man's Sky. I um. I've long since stopped picking on No Man's Sky because it's largely been fixed. I just, it's just, it's just, in, it's just, um, that style, that, the style of game that it wants to do is something I don't have a whole lot of interest in. And I still say eternally, fuck you to the anonymous friend who bought me No Man's Sky. I'm not playing it. Barely played any of it when you bought it for me after it had all been fixed. I don't know who you are, but I will find you and I will gift you back something worse. Send him Bomberman X Zero. I don't. I, that's not something even I'd want to waste my money on, Monk. He said something worse. That was one of the things that came to mind. Mm. Mm. Oh. I'm, I'm looking for grown worthy gag gift, not uh, torture in the form of an Xbox 360 or. Yeah, Xbox 360 disc. Nakopara? <laughs> I don't know. I own Nakopara. I like that. So. Yeah, I had I had to think I had to think of I had to think of something. Um, you could always give you could always give him Dear Esther. You're right. <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna go one further though, Monk. I'll give them Gone Home. <laughs> Ah, uh, how did I know that was coming? Everything I said about Gone Home in that one in that one video I was asked to do all those years ago still applies. <laughs> I will one of these days do a episode about why about why I do not respect art games, but today is not that day. And as far as far as you mentioning VTubers, well, stay tuned. But. I would like to sincerely thank everyone who took the time out of their schedule to listen to us ramble and gush about about what's coming and let and um if anytime somebody is lamenting that there's no good games coming, show them this video. Let them hear our enthusiasm. And then watch and then watch and then watch them eat crow or have or have nothing to say. People who say there are no good games are people who are not looking hard enough or not looking at all. You know, they're they're the type of person who wa who who might wa who might watch a few videos from Yang Ye and then think and then think that's the entire industry. Yep, performative cynicism, as we mentioned earlier. And I got I got no beef with Yang Ye. I, I appreciate the work that he does, and I'm glad to see he's venturing into voice acting. But um, the but the fact of the matter is, the squeaky wheel gets the grease. Indeed. And. I'll have. I will. I'm of course not. I'm of course no nowhere near finished. We'll be back. We'll be back, not with a discussion video because I don't think we're going to be doing that for a while unless something worthy um, pops up. I almost did it on the on the on that Kotaku article trying to bash Critical Role, but I didn't see the point. But we will be we will be back on Friday with a with a brand new entry into our our deep dive into Veil of the Void. And well the well the thing that's funny about that is we may is we once again we may be influencing the 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 um upkeep with with a game. Yeah. Yeah. So that's a feather to put in our caps. And of course, I've got of course I've got a fair few a fair few guests, inclu including including a few surprises coming down the pipe. But until then, 
On behalf of the good brothers present and not present, my name is Mildra, I am your gaming monk, stay fucking frosty everybody!